Okay, so thank you all uh, for attending this event, another Nash Talks. Uh, we started this a while ago when all the coronavirus thing uh, started and we had to all uh, come home. Uh, we did a lot of good things in relation to well-being, mental health, nutrition, um, working from home tips. And today we're doing the CV1. So the reason why we're doing this today is because I've been receiving a lot of message uh, from people trying to get their CV recorded. Uh, sorry, their CV reviewed. Um, and unfortunately, I can't help everyone. Uh, so I've been doing some videos on my on my LinkedIn to help you. And I had uh, the pleasure to meet Marona and her partner Geraldine, and they are part of my career dot university. Uh, and they do help uh, with online courses uh, where you can see uh, where they where you can review your CV. Obviously, they don't do it for you, but they'll give you tips that you can work on and make the perfect CV and get your dream job. Um, so she will be speaking a little bit more about that. We have yeah. Marona here today with us. She is the founder of my career and she will be the one sharing uh, all these insights on how to write your best CV. Uh, my career is a startup building with the first ever digital career coaching experience uh, to help you all get your job dreams. So yeah, I'm gonna pass to Marona now. She'll give you the tips, <laughs> and I'll and I'll myself as a recruiter, um, I'll try to give a few insights of what we see as well. Uh, off to you, Marona. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you so much, Nadine, and thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I'm very excited to be here and um, kind of share some tips, but also not just mine, it'll also be Nadine, who you all know is a recruiter, so she'll also tell you what she wants to see on your CV, um, which is the insider knowledge you want, right? <laughs> so why are we here anyways? Um, we all know that, you know, when employers discard candidates very quickly, usually under even a minute, how do you build something that gets their attention? What actually happens when you send your CV to a recruiter or even hit the apply button on LinkedIn? Do you know where it goes? Do you know how it's assessed? So there are lots of things to consider when planning a CV and Things like, what do you write? How do you write it? How do you prove your skills? Um, what do you write to stand out? Should we include an objective or no objective? Do you need more than one resume? Um, how many pages can it be? Which template is best? So lots of questions. And if you don't know all of the answers, you're certainly not alone. This stuff is really tricky and it's quite normal to get overwhelmed. Um, so again, thank you for being here as we will tackle some of these questions together and put you back in the driving seat of your own career. Um, so we don't have very long together actually today um, and we won't be able to, you know, cover everything there is to know about CVs. This talk is actually a small part of a larger program that Nadine mentioned. Um, that I created based on extensive personal and professional research, dozens of examples from successful candidates, and even supporting hundreds of people just like you. So let's jump right to the very important stuff, all right? So when planning your CV, there are three thinking frameworks that can help you be your own detective and master of your own CV. These frameworks guide you on how you should be thinking about your CV, what you should write, how you should structure it, and how you should write it. So we'll talk about how your resume is assessed so you can put yourself in the shoes of the people who actually have to read your CV and see it through our eyes. And in the second framework, we'll tell you how to stand out and get noticed. And I'll finish with a th third framework where I'll show you how to sound impressive and prove your skills with the Spark formula. And if, ne if you've never heard of that, do not worry because I will tell you what it is. All right, so what should go on your resume and how should you structure it? I've seen, as I mentioned, hundreds of CVs that, that actually either contain way too much information, just literally spilling over multiple pages, often in separate columns, um, just a lot going on. Or they don't contain enough information where candidates just kind of list previous job responsibilities, if that in some cases. So my first advice is always, always, always to think about your CV from the recruiter's or hiring manager's perspective. 
So just put yourself in their shoes for a minute. You know, they have a job to fill for which they receive dozens of applications, if not hundreds. And they're often also very busy, especially if they don't have a dedicated HR team. So a lot of companies hiring is done by team managers who have their full-time job. But on top of that, they also have to hire a new employee. So you can imagine it's time consuming and stressful for, the, for them. Um, so they're only going to skim through the applications they receive, looking for proof that one of the applicants would be able to do the job. So how do you make it easy for them to hire you and not somebody else? So your job here is to make it as easy as possible for them to find the information that you're the right candidate. We want punchy, we want short, to the point, effective writing covering your most relevant strengths, skills, and achievements. Um, so what is the right information? It's your strengths, right? Your skills. Your reader has to read your CV and think, this person could be a good fit, right? They could do the job, so let's interview them. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, the CV doesn't get you the job. It just gets your foot in the door like a key. And, you know, opening that door with a CV is hard. Like, it takes practice and multiple iterations um, often to get it right. But if you do go through the process, your CV will gradually become a carefully crafted, concise story that articulates all the best things about you. And these are the things that will make employers want to meet you for an interview and kind of give you that time, that precious time that they have that is quite limited to them. So let's have a more detailed look at what a good CV actually looks like. And thank you everyone who has submitted their CVs for today. We could unfortunately only choose one uh, and we believe that this is the one we could all most learn from. It's one or two pages long usually, and it starts with your name at the top, um, the part that's in pink, <laughs> and contains a personal profile or short summary, your education and work experience. So Nadine, do you want to tell us more about what you look at when you receive a CV and how the structure of this CV meets your expectations as a recruiter? Yeah, sure. So like you said, um, we receive thousands of not thousand, okay, hundreds of CVs every day. Uh, that's mainly our role, right? As a recruiter, and I'm speaking, working at it as an agency, so that's uh, the most experience that I have. Uh, but as a recruiter, you receive, that's, that's your main role. That's all you have to do all day, reviewing CVs all the time, making sure that you're making the correct decision when you're calling someone, asking the right questions. So it all evolves on the CV, so it is, super important uh, that you have most of my questions answered uh, on the CV and on an easy way to read. So we got this example because it, it can be a good example and like you said, to learn from. Um, what I would say that I like to see a CV is very straight to the point, very clean, um, like she has here. Uh, it's not, there's not a lot going on. So when I say a lot going on, I'm talking about those CVs uh, that are made, um, how would you say, that have columns here, loads of bright colors uh, going on. Um, has, it's amazing the effort that they put in, but for me, it's more difficult to read um, when I'm going through it. And because I read so many CVs every day, I just like to be very snappy and I can go straight to the point and say, okay, yes, he has what I'm looking for let me give them a call. Um, and what I found here is that the structure is nice. So you have the name, you have your details, the details that you need, uh, I would say only the mobile number and email address and name, uh, everything else, it, it's not necessary, uh, like address or date of birth, or if you're married or not, or even like a profile picture. Uh, we don't need that. We basically just need your experience and a way to contact you. Uh, so that's how I would put in. Um, and then she has this profile summary. So that's essential to have there. Uh, with the profile summary, it's where I'll be able to know if you are really good for the role or not, or just give it, have an idea of exactly what you've been through without looking straight away to the work experience. Um, and I think that's you only need, like she has like four to five lines. You don't need to tell the whole story, but just make sure that you, your skills are there. So like Mirona said, 
the skills is very important. So that's why you need to tailor your CV to every job application you do. If I'm looking for an account manager that has experience with sales, I need to see that on your summary, that you have that experience with sales, uh, that you have excellent communication, influence skills. So all the skills that I'm putting on the job spec, and that's why that's it's so easy to do a profile summary, just go to the job spec, see what skills they're looking for, make sure they are highlighted on your profile summary. Um, and yeah, everything else like profile summary, skills below uh, profile summary, and then your work experience, uh, very highlighted. So this brings me exactly to the next framework because Nadine mentioned tailoring. And this is actually one of the biggest misconceptions about creating a CV so that, you know, you make your one resume, your one and only, your absolute truth, and you just kind of send it around far and wide, um, which is a technique we actually call spray and pray, because you literally spray your CV everywhere and then you pray someone will answer. So, and in moments, of, desper <laughs> in moments of desperation after I graduated, I was absolutely guilty of this. And you can tell me in the comments if you've done this too. Um, so I would go on a big platform like LinkedIn and apply to random jobs with one single click. Um, easy, right? But do you think I ever heard anything back? <laughs> crickets, absolute crickets. So to become a successful candidate then, um, you must accept that every job deserves its own CV. Everything you do when you apply for a job opening should be focused on answering the following questions in order. So one, what does the employer need? And two, how can I meet their needs if I'm hired? The candidate who best understands the first question by studying you know, the job description, putting yourself in the employer's shoes and understanding what the company does, that candidate can also best show how they can meet the employer's needs through their CV and application. So our second thinking framework is that whatever decision you make about your CV, about how you write your information and how you structure it, you have to make it relevant and convincing to the person who's gonna read it. So you tweak your CV for every job opportunity. That means sometimes restructuring, that means changing your profile to really uh, put those skills that Nadine was saying, these are the skills we need for that job. Um, so you have to evaluate what information is the most important to employers. And then you structure your CV to start with the most essential information at the top. And sometimes this might be your skills, your education. Other times this might just be your work experience, especially if, you know, for example, your education isn't relevant to your current field of work. If you studied something completely different and somehow ended up in an industry that has nothing to do with that, your education might not be the most important thing. Um, so that being said, do all employers need the same thing? And there is sometimes some overlap, uh, but each hiring manager does have their um, own expectations. So it's very important to try to understand those through the job description um, and the kind of work the team does uh, to, to tailor your CV. And back to you, Nadine, in your experience, how do the best candidates do this on their CV? Okay, so first of all, I would like to my, make myself guilty on the spray and pray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I've done that <laughs> um, a lot. And I, at the end, I was like, why does no one just reply to me? It's always no, I don't understand. <laughs> so that's when I started to do a little more tailoring stuff. Um, I always say we are recruiters, but uh, we are also candidates at some point. So um, we all have to learn from this and even I'm not sure sometimes of how to do it nowadays or if, if I were to be a candidate now I would definitely need to review my CV for example and <laughs> it's not I would take all these tips as well <laughs> so we are all in the same boat guys um what I feel that it what stands out for me is it's the skills and the effort of making sure that the CV is tailored to that position and that could be easily done obviously I know it takes a lot of work, but you have to think if, if it takes a lot of work now to send the CV, but once it's done, um, everything else will be just easier for you. And if you do it today for one type of job, then you'll have that CV already tailored for that specific job. And then you'll have another one tailored for another specific job. And you'll see at the end of the day, you, you already have your CVs ready to go. Uh, it just takes a lot of work, but it's the best way because 
uh, as a recruiter, I always call and try to make sure that I know your story because I can see behind your work experience. But for someone that receives 200 uh, CVs per day, maybe maybe other companies are not willing to, to take a look at all of them. So you need to make sure that you stand out. So like I said previously, the profile summary is super important to understand exactly what you're looking for. We have the example of this CV. I don't know if you can show it again, the CV that we have. Um, <laughs> Uh, this candidate, she's done uh, architecture and more, most recently uh, she done project management. Uh, but from the profile summary, I can't understand exactly what route she wants to take, what kind of job she wants to go. So this would require me to have a call with her, try to understand uh, what route she's going through, what, how, why did she decide to move to project management, what does that entail? So she'll definitely have to uh, two different types of CVs. So when she's sending to a project manager role, she needs to make sure that all the skills highlighted on the job spec are there. Um, and also on the responsibilities, uh, the way that she has her responsibilities, which I think uh, we need to mention, it's very good. Uh, the way she puts in her responsibilities there, um, she's actually telling you what she does instead of copying a job spec and just putting, putting it there. Uh, one thing that I would say is if she's applying for a project management role, just make sure that the bullet points are also structured and organized in a way that what I'll see first is things related to project management. So I'll know exactly from the top of her old CV that she's the right fit for that position. And I'm not even doubting about it. And I just want to call her and try to give her more information on the role that I have. Uh, so that's exactly one point that she should should be able to review here, make sure that your profile summary is relevant to the job that you are applying to, make sure that your responsibilities also uh, show in an organized way uh, what's best for that kind of role. Um, and again, this is very easy to do when you have a job spec. Read the job spec and you'll know exactly what they're looking for. Once you pass that point and you get to the interview stage, things are completely different and you'll be able to show even more uh, why you are a good fit for the company. And the other thing that I'll put in on the responsibilities there, she's very good at, the, uh, at showing her responsibilities, but also make sure you show your achievements. And just one note, guys, if you want to participate during the live session, you can always uh, say something on the chat. You can leave your opinion. I know there's a few recruiters as well uh, on, the, on the session. So if you guys have any advice on the specific topic that we're having, feel free to put it on the chat. I'm always with my eye on it uh, if you want to participate. Uh, but yeah, that's my... <laughs> so Nadine was just saying that it's important to show your achievements as well um, in your bullet points. So yes, you can talk about what your day-to-day -day was like, what your responsibilities were, but it's important to kind of give an idea of the impact that your work had. And it's... So coming back to skills, it's all about, you know, proving those skills rather than just, you know, potentially declaring yourself a leader or a problem solver because that's what the job spec said uh, or that you're an excellent communicator and then just kind of calling it a day. You actually have to prove you have those skills and demonstrate you could do the job on offer. So the um, last framework is actually proving. So anything that goes onto your resume is not about procla proclaiming a skill you may have or describing a job responsibility you once held. Instead, you describe a concrete action you took that drew onto one of your skills and highlight the results you achieve. So think in terms of specific actions you've taken, yes, but also think of what the result was, what the impact of your work was. So if I take an example from the CV we reviewed, um, there's this one bullet point that says, uh, control the project as lead architect and solve problems during various phases of the project. So it starts really well with the action verb controlled, but then the language just kind of gets vague and repetitive, uh, vague with some problems, repetitive with this project said twice in a tiny sentence. Um, 
And it also kind of really leaves me wanting more. So Nadine was mentioning this, that she does end up calling a lot of um, candidates, asking them more questions. So these, on this sentence, for example, I want to ask how big was this project? What were the, these problems that you solved specifically and how did you solve them? And more importantly, what was actually the impact on the delivery of this project? Can you quantify it? Did your problem solve, uh, your problem solving skills reduce cost or time, for example? And what you want is you don't want to leave your reader with so many unanswered questions. So you have to make sure to give them a bit more specificity to help them imagine you in their team actually achieving the same kind of results. And Nadine here, being an amazing recruiter, will actually ask you these questions and help you clarify these answers on your CV. But she can't do that for every CV in a pile of hundreds. Um, so Nadine, what would you what would be like an amazing bullet point uh, read to you? Like what, what's a bullet point that would make you want to, pre to, to present that candidate to the employer? And just one note before you answer, as you were saying before um, that, you know, you read the bullet points, then you want that. If you say you're in project management, you'll want the first bullet point to be about that. And just on that note, I wanted to add that Nadine doesn't do this, but there are recruiters and employers out there who will just read the first bullet point of each experience. <laughs> so you want to make sure it is your strongest one and the most relevant one. So back to you, Nadine. Basically, what I would say is you want to make sure that everything is right on point and it's, it's from the top. Uh, imagine reading the same journal or different journals like every day in a row your attention will, like humanly, it's not possible to be focused with the same kind of 100% focus on every CV. So you just wanna make sure that I'm, when I'm reading your CV, I'm just checking my box. So if I'm, I'm just gonna give an example of the roles that I work. So for example, if I'm looking for a marketing consultant or an account manager, what I need to know is that you deal with multiple clients. So I'll be waiting to read that sentence, you know? Um, uh, project leading with multiple clients, um, sales experience for like five years, things like that. That's what I'm going to do, like checkbox, check, check, check. So that's, I try to always read behind the work experience, but like Marona said, if we have a hundred, it, it's, it's nearly impossible to call everyone and try to figure out the story ourselves. So that's why we want you to tell the, the, the story. So a great bullet point for me um, is, uh, for example, if you are on, on this one, she's going for project management. Um, like you said, worked uh, on 15 stations, a part of detailed design consultant team. This shows me that she worked with multiple stations, which it couldn't be good for my client if that's exactly what they're looking for, but I'll need to know a little bit more about it. So that's where you come with your achievements. Uh, for me, the greatest bullet points, to be honest, are the achievements. Uh, depending on the role as well, because most of the, there are some roles that you can't be doing projects autonomously. Uh, but for me, achievement is a great thing where you implemented a new process. How did you do it? What results did you bring out of that? Uh, where you increase the sales? How did you do it? Where's the process behind that? So that's for me, it's the greatest bullet points. And when you explain in detail exactly what you do, so you need to prove yourself. And another thing, from the structure and how you organize your CV is that if you are saying that you're a very analytical person and then you have multiple multiple mistakes on your CV, that doesn't show quite well. So make sure that you always review the spell, all you do the spelling check at the end of your CV. If you're saying that you are very intensive to detail, again, your CV needs to be on point. Uh, if you're saying that you're an organized person, but then you don't have even the dates on your CV, that's one thing that it's it's good here on this CV. Always make sure that you have the month and the year, because if you only put in like 2017 to 2018, I'll never know uh, how, how many months or in total, how much experience do you have. Uh, also dealing with gap years. So if there's a time that you, you weren't working for more than six months, it's always good to put there what were you doing. If it, it, you don't need to justify yourself, but if you can just put in something like, took time to travel or did a career break for personal reasons, whatever it is, like gaps are always good. We have a question here about the ITS system. 
Uh, like I said, I only have experience with an agency and for us it doesn't work that way. Uh, it's more the big companies that work with those type of systems. Well, from my experience and from what I've heard, uh, it's all about having the skills highlighted on your CV. But I, I'm going to tell you a little bit more okay, just in a very short while about okay. the ATS. There you go, <laughs> we could not have, have a experience. talk about CVs without talking about ATS. There you go. <laughs> There's your so, expert. <laughs> <laughs> so we can. All right. So let's move on. We've just told you, you know, you have to do this in your bullet points and it's a lot. Right. Um, uh, and the good news is, is that there's actually a formula to help you identify that information, but also to actually write it. So how do you actually write these skills and achievements that you have? How do you prove that you have them? And this formula gives you the answer to how to keep your CV precise with you know, the relevant details, how to make your CV personal and meaningful at the same time, how to make your point across in a straight and readable way, how to quantify your achievements and better explain your experience because you do have to do all those things. <laughs> and all the answers kind of just lie in this one formula. Um, so yes, do pay attention now. It's the last kind of part of the, the talk uh, because this is kind of the magic formula that will solve all of your CV troubles, hopefully. Um, so what is this voodoo, this spark thing? Um, so as I, we mentioned before, in reviewing, I've reviewed a lot of CVs and I'm pretty sure Nadine has done it a lot more than me, but I just kind of kept asking myself, how can I explain to my students how to write a compelling bullet point that will actually impress the reader? It's super awkward to write. Um, it's very hard to decide what to write and how to write it. And most people will just copy paste the responsibilities from their job descriptions, but you actually have to go several steps beyond that. So after many headaches, as you can imagine, and trials, I just came up with Spark, as in, you know, spark your bullet points, <laughs> little pun there. Uh, but more importantly, as in uh, skill, problem, action, result, and keyword. And the keyword is where the ATS will come in. So if you use this to identify the information you should be writing about and tweaking your bullet points, your CV will become so much stronger. And you can also use it to review the content you already have, because I'm sure most of you already have CVs, and just kind of going through this and asking yourself if it meets this criteria. So let's take it step by step. The first step is to compose your skill set strategically. So skill is the first part of the formula because resume creation always begins with choosing a specific set of skills and preferably and importantly and mandatory, <laughs> you'll have to choose the skills listed in the job description of the job you want. So choose a skill, not a task or a process, not even an achievement at this point. So for example, this can be, you know, something simple like written communication. And by the way, as Nadine said, writing a good professional CV, you know, sending a compelling cover letter, maintaining excellent email etiquette when you speak to them, these things will already prove to employer that you're a good communicator. So it's not just about saying it on your CV. And same goes for being organized. If the information on your CV isn't, it doesn't really matter that you say you are, it just won't be believed. And so this brings me to step two, which is identifying a problem you help solve in your job. So what's a challenge you help solve that is related to the skill you chose? And here you get bonus points if you can actually identify a challenge that you might also encounter at the job you're targeting, should they decide to hire you. So for example, you had to deliver bespoke customer experience after clarifying their needs and demands, or better yet, you had to resolve disputes with difficult clients. These will be challenged. This would be challenges uh, within communications that you helped solve. So then we'd move on to asking ourselves, how did we exactly, what did we do to solve the problem? And it's important to be specific when describing your experience. So do focus on the actions you took and the tools you used to actually uh, complete those actions. Um, and this will overlap a lot with the responsibilities you had in the job because those are the actions you actually take you know, to do your job. Um, so if we take our example of customer service, you could say, for example, that you, know, you streamlined customer service by tagging 600 customer requests and categorizing them into 22 types for which you created answer templates. I mean, that's super specific, right? And it sounds good. 
Um, so being specific makes you stand out because it just gives more meaning to your words. It helps the employee imagine you doing the same for his company, which is exactly what you want. So specificity takes fluffy words and just gives them meaning. Uh, and in the same way, this is the place to illustrate a certain tool you listed in your additional skills. So for example, if you use the specific software or a framework to perform this task, you can say it here and this will give the employer an idea of your degree of competency in that software or framework. Um, because a lot of time people will have a huge list of software they can use, but we don't really know. A, a good example is Excel. Like everybody can kind of use Excel, but those who really use Excel, that's a different story. Um, so this is a way to illustrate your actual competency. And by the way, as you write all of this, do begin each bullet point with an action-oriented skills-based verb. So this, these are things like, you know, manage, designed, analyzed, planned, facilitated. Um, and here's a tip. Do not use the same action verb more than once throughout your resume. Um, you only have one or two pages, right? You can, I mean, there's many words out there you can use. <laughs> so do get your, there's, there's I actually can't pronounce it, you know, the place where you find all the synonyms. <laughs> so do check that out uh, and help. It will help a lot. So back to the formula and step four, and it's step four. And this is quantifying your results with metrics. So to ensure your resume really stands out, you have to quantify your results as much as you can. It's not always easy because you, sometimes you don't have access to those results or it was a team effort. Uh, but do try to ask yourself what the direct result of your action was. What did you accomplish? And use numbers as much, as much as you can. Employers love to know if the results of your work were significant enough to have directly impacted the financial bottom line of a company. And in our customer experience example, you could say that, for example, you reduced answer delays by three hours and increased customer satisfaction by 20%. Now this just like puts the cherry on top of your bullet point and you'll be golden. <laughs> so always clearly outline the result your actions had and demonstrate quantifiable impact. And I know this is not easy. And some of the questions that you can ask yourself to kind of help you identify these things are, you know, did I do my job better than an average employee in the same role? What did I accomplish that another employee might not have? Did I improve the company's processes in any way? What made me good at my job? What positive things did my boss say about me, for example, or my coworkers? Um, how did I lend my skills and experience to the company? So do try this on your own resume. And I think you'll be quite impressed with yourselves. <laughs> and on to the final step, the keywords. Uh, <laughs> so this is where ATS comes in, uh, because you do have to tweak your vocabulary, vocabulary to include relevant keywords. These are descriptive words, mostly now capture skills acquired through education and experience or refer to industry specific hard skills. And while some keywords can apply to skills within a variety of industries like, you know, project management or customer service, Others are much more sector specific like employee onboarding or workforce planning. Um, and keywords can also be a certain type of degree or software that is key to the role on offer. So think of it this way, keywords are the words employers would put into Google to find their ideal candidates. So they have an idea of the skills, knowledge and experience that person should have and that's what they search for. And you know, today, most applications are screened by applicant tracking software algorithm, algorithms. So unless you send your resume by email or to Nadine, we can be almost sure that a bot is our first recipient. And this bot is not your friend because he isn't trained to make sense of your experiences or appreciate your personality. It literally just scans your resume and cover letter for keywords, just like, you know, Google scans the wide open internet for those search results and it will only forward the applications that meet the spe specific set of criteria to the hiring manager which means that a lot of the time a human being won't even see your application if you do not meet the criteria but here is not just about beating the bots i mean it's nice but it's not just that because hiring managers 
have a mental picture of who their ideal candidate is and any candidate's goal must be to prove they're exactly that person. So you have to study exactly like when you're in school, <laughs> you study the job posting carefully and make a list of the keywords in it. Employers spend a lot of time writing these job descriptions telling you exactly what they need. So your job is to show them that you are the closest match to the applicants. And the best way to do that is actually by using the same words they do and just feeding them back to them. So just like feed the keywords back to them. Uh, this will tell them you're, you're their person. And don't stop there, you know, read their website, browse their LinkedIn posts, just make note of the language they use. This will give you insight into their culture um, as well as, um, their work and what they do and what's important to them. And if you do this, when you will write your application, you'll definitely be sounding like an insider already. And that's what you want. So if you do want to learn more, uh, there's a lot more that can be learned about CVs, um, a lot more industry specific things or, you know, having even having examples from successful candidates, having tools like, you know, instead of going to search for synonyms I give them to you or <laughs> having a list of industry specific keywords that are quite common. Um, you can get examples of good CV summaries and just a ton more. Um, this is an extract for from my larger program. So do check it out at this link um, if you're interested at all. That's perfect, Marana. Thank you for all that, especially with the ATS. Uh, that's obviously the same question everyone wants to know. <laughs> so basically, guys, we're going to go for questions and answers. I know it's it's been a while now. It's 40 minutes, so uh, we don't want to stick you here forever. So we're going to go for questions. If you want, if you have a question or even just a, your opinion about this or any comments would you, that you would like to add, uh, please let us know uh, and we'll reply to this. Um, Caroline just said this was perfect. Thank you. Okay, we're done the here. <laughs> we are done. Done for the um, day. <laughs> so I'm gonna actually send the poll to you all, uh, to everyone here now. It's just a quick feedback before you go, and I'll be reading the questions that we have at the moment, uh, so we can answer you. So you'll be seeing. Hopefully, you'll see now. It's very quick, so you can just let us know what do you think. And we do have one question here. Um, from Evelyn, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Uh, she said, in the job description, sometimes we have seen job summary, job qualification, and what will you do? So how, how to tailor it? Should we tend to focus on qualification, qualification or on the job summary description that might match with my experience? Should I remove the description from my former job description to be relevant? Uh, so basically what I would say, this is my opinion here, uh, is that you should always go for the requirements. That's usually where the skills are. Um, and there you'll be able to know what exactly skills should you highlight uh, on your CV. Uh, the profile summary, you just need to make sure that it's directed to that role. So for example, if you're going for customer success or customer service, uh, you can just say, uh, I have three years of experience with customer, um, customer facing, is it B2B, is it B2C, um, how many calls you do, or if, if, it's, if it's cold calling, or if it's in, uh, incoming calls, what is it, just make sure it's there. But usually the skills go around like attention to detail, so you make sure you have that. Uh, they usually go as well with soft skills. Uh, that's a, a big one for customer service, I would say. So make sure that you highlight uh, that you have those kind of soft skills like being empathetic, um, put, putting yourself in other clients' shoes or uh, attention to details or influencing skills, whatever it is, usually it's on the requirements. So that's what I would do. And I would never remove anything from your job description. I would only add it if it was relevant or change the order that you have it. So just make sure that it's more relevant and you'll get a sense of what's relevant when you read the job spec. So on the job spec, they will let you know what you're gonna do. So that little part of responsibilities. And uh, so just make sure that the responsibilities from your current job, the ones that are relevant are on top uh, of that. Or if you wanna add something there that you can see on the job that you are applying for, you can see that it's relevant and you actually do it, but you never put it on your CV. Sometimes that happens. 
uh, just make sure you add it in. So this is my quick answer. Uh, we have more questions, so I'll try to make myself quick. But do you agree, Marana, or? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The only thing I would add is that reading a lot of job descriptions, a lot of the time there will be repetition between the, the different um, parts of the job description. And I think that's often a good indicator to see what's the most important as well to kind of identify maybe those top three things that really should be on your CV. Um, so that's my my uh, my input. Yeah. And don't forget <laughs> that the responsibility is something that you're going to learn as well. You're going to go to a new company. You're also going to learn. So you don't need to have everything they have on the responsibilities. So just really literally just go by the, the requirements. Um, and that's on one question. Uh, we have a comment here. Very insightful PD that I missed the beginning. So there's no PD about it because you're going to receive a recording of this. So <laughs> <our mind. laughs> uh, if you have your email address, if you register for the event, you'll definitely receive a recording. So you'll be able to hear us once again, <laughs> if you'd like. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thanks. On repeat. <laughs> On repeat forever. <laughs> so another question we have here. Um, what should be the number of pages in a CV for data analytics or business analytics roles? So I would always say, if you can bring it to two pages max, that's perfect. But again, if you have a lot of experience and you have a lot to tell, then don't limit yourself. Obviously don't give them an essay to read, <laughs> but uh, try to have it like two to three pages, I would say. Put the important stuff there, what's really relevant. Sometimes we have loads of bullet points um, showing our responsibilities and sometimes they, you don't need all of that. It's something that you can have on the call. So just make sure you highlight the ones that you review your CV on your own way and what do you feel it's more relevant to that job, just keep it. What you can remove, remove it. Uh, but yeah, just make sure, especially for data analytics, I would say achievements is a big thing. Uh, make sure that you have your skills, what tools do you use, so if on the job spec, they're saying that you'll be responsible and you'll use this type of system. If you have used it, just show them uh, what's your experience on that. Just make sure that that's there. Again, the job spec will give you all the answers, guys. It's really a no brainer on that. Um, if, you, if you have the time, make an effort to make sure that your CV is really tailored to that job. Obviously don't copy and paste everything, but just make sure that <laughs> bullet points are really relevant to that job, everything else. Uh, they will a good A good rule of thumb to have is that, especially as you target your CV, right? You don't have to put everything, everything you know how to do. You just have to identify what's the most important for that employer and kind of have that on the CV. Um, so that being said, kind of a rule is that you should aim to have about three bullet points under each work experience and your page your cv should be on should be one page if you have less than 10 years of experience and more than one page if you have uh more than 10 years of experience and uh did i say that right so <laughs> one page if you have less than 10 years of experience um yeah. but of course i mean you're the judge of that so again put yourself in the shoes of the employer and if you need more space that's fine um it's just you know kind of a rule to, will be to think about that. so mm -hmm. if, I'm, if i'm asking someone to have 10 years of experience i'm not expecting one pager on the cv as well yeah so it's no problem on that it's just mm -hmm. a case if there's a this is a role that only needs three years maybe you can remove a few stuff uh, because you already have, you know, you have the, the experience on it. Uh, we have here a comment from Katya as well. Thanks, very useful. First of all, I need to change the whole CV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the second one, just for habit, I will go anyway to pray after each one. So pray and pray. I love that thing. I'm going to start <laughs> using that. Uh, another comment, this was really helpful. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to deliver such valuable insights. Not all companies do this. Thank you so much. We thank you guys for being here. Yeah, and thank you so much. Uh, that's us. And another comment, thank you for an interesting webinar. Thank you guys for showing here. I have other questions as well. So we have a few more questions, okay? okay. So how do we showcase our soft skills? Should it be in the profile summary or true achievements or in skills? It should be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, but like more specifically, you soft skills will be demonstrated on an interview stage, I would always say, because that's where you get the questions. When did you deal with a hard client? Things like that. That's where you're going to show your soft skills. Uh, but I would always uh, put in 
on the achievements. If you can prove yourself through the achievements, uh, that's perfect. On the skills, don't go with all of them. Because I, I remember when I did customer service, soft skills were like five or seven of them. Um, <laughs> but it, I never put it as well on the skills because it, it's really, you, you have to show them how to use those soft skills. It's not like Marona was saying, not be, not only if you say that you are organized, doesn't mean that you are organized. So it's something that you need to prove itself, but I'll try to have a true achievement uh, a little bit on skills. Uh, I wouldn't put empathy on skills, for example, but for example, time management, maybe uh, that could be used um, on skills. What do you think Marana, on this one? Yeah, so for, you just mentioned time management and the way you can do this very effectively is for having a bullet point, for example, where you are juggling different projects, for example, in a situation and you manage to reach the deadlines or even exceed them. Um, these are all things that you can put on your CV that will showcase your time management skills mm. and showing on time at the interview. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is a few things like, oh, we have a, a call scheduled for four, but you couldn't pick up or you say you have great time management and you're like, oh, I'm so busy. It's things like that. You need to make sure that your CV is literally your personality as well. Uh, I have, a, I think this question is more for you, Marona, because you deal with uh, pre pressures. That's what they call it. Pressures? Uh, so, some advice on CV for pressures without any experience. Ooh. That's a long one. <laughs> uh, do check out my program because it's literally for newly graduates. So I think you'll find a lot of very useful things there. Uh, but just to answer very quickly, um, it's not because you're a fresher that you don't have any valuable skills or experience. You actually, you've done things in university, you've worked on projects, maybe you volunteered, maybe you were part of a student society. Um, so all these things are valuable and you can write all those out in the same way, you know, a person who has 10 years of experience would write their experience. Um, it's hard and to, it's hard to organize a party at college. So yeah. organizing an event like that. Uh, it takes skills. <laughs> it takes skills as well. Yeah. <laughs> And you will be focusing, obviously, on soft skills uh, because we'd, I assume that you wouldn't have very developed industry-specific skills, um, and that's fine. So Verona, actually, she deals with all the new graduates, so definitely check out her profile, um, her website, and try to manage one of the courses. She will basically tell you how to tell your story. Uh, straight away from college and again you're not expected to have three years of experience if you were in college so don't yeah. uh, don't feel bad uh, about uh, it yeah. and something so I attended um, a kind of a industry review whatever talk the other day um, and they were looking at the job market today after the pandemic and during the pandemic I guess uh, <laughs> uh, but they were saying that 45 percent of the job market is still for graduates so there's lots of jobs out there for 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 you guys um, so don't despair that's perfect. So the next question uh, is, should I list a reference or rather say that they are available on request? Um, I think that's not, at least for me, it's not very important. If they are available on request, that's fine. Just mention that, have them ready, because at least from my experience, I use it at an offer stage. Uh, to check the reference uh, when we get an offer. So it, it's late in the process. Uh, it's it's not like if you don't have it on your CV, I'm going to be like, oh, no, he never worked there. Uh, he's lying. No, it's, <laughs> it's good to have it ready to go. And it's good to know. And uh, one thing that I do, it's a little bit similar to reference. I, I always check on LinkedIn, for example, uh, for the recommendations. I don't know if other recruiters do it, but that's my best way to say, OK, he, he is yeah. the only one. Else. So don't be afraid of asking your colleagues like we are all here for each other so ask them for a recommendation give one to your friends or colleagues it's always good uh, to have it on your profile it helps a little bit more to show your personality and that you are what you say you are basically i love that and then you get people have... to recommend you on your if, all if, if you've time. spoken to them <laughs> all the time all the time like if i if i bring someone in through the process and I usually go through every step of the way with them, even when they get the offer or if they don't get the offer, I'm like, hey, how are you? <laughs> are you there? Are you still there? You remember me? So I always try to make sure that my 
job is also recognized in that way. So I'm not afraid of asking a recommendation from someone that I, I tried to get a job or actually got the job. Uh, because that's that's the way you're going to see there's so many people out there, so many recruiters. So why would people deal with me? Why am I different? And I try to show them through recommendations uh, and see if I can get as many people as I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have another question. Do you review CVs by NHS? Unfortunately, we don't uh, do that service. Um, basically, we, we are reviewing CVs all day. It's a very busy day for recruiters. Um, I would say, especially now, we want to help everyone. And we are just trying to get the CV, be able to send it to the hiring manager, get those interviews going. So we don't, unfortunately, we don't have the time uh, to review CVs one by one. Uh, but yeah, Marona here, that's, that's her tool that she has. Now, she won't review the CV and tailor it for you. So if that's what you're looking for, this is not the website or the course that you should buy. But basically, uh, she will help you with all of this uh, to make sure uh, that your CV will stand out. So she'll give you way more tips than we have. You can so I get this question a lot, um, especially as I used to do that. Um, and I was a CV writer for a while. I just now don't really have the time with, with running the company. Uh, but you have my email here and I do have partners who do review CVs if that's what you want, like kind of that one-on-one -on -one, um, editing and, and help. Um, so send me an email. Sorry, Marana, uh, just had to pick up here. Uh, did you ask anything? Sorry. Oh, I was just saying um, that they can email me about uh, okay, about, the, about, about the review. Perfect. Uh, so then, is there a certain way CVs should be if you're trying to move into the tech world? I'm struggling to transition it with my experience mainly in financial service. So th th this, is, this is interesting because it depends what level of position you're targeting in the tech world. It also depends it, if there's overlap with your job in finance. Um, there's a lot of, you know, kind of finance oriented roles in tech as well. Um, so it's not like you're totally doing something different. And again, when you're switching industry, the advice is to focus on your soft skills, which are often transferable, which means that you will need those whatever job you do. Um, so do highlight those assistant. on your CV. She's mm -hmm. saying it's an executive assistant. Executive assistant. Okay. So do you know have focus on your transferable skills, anything that you've done that you think they will also need in that job, um, and you, you'll be fine. Perfect. So how important are extracurriculars, volunteer experience in a CV? If I have 10 years of industry experience, would I still need to list them? Um, I think it's for, it's, it's always important. Um, I would say just organize your CV uh, in a way to put the most important thing on top, uh, but that's relevant. Uh, I like to see those stuff uh, on the CV and just speaking about it. If we have something in common, it will be just our conversation will be mm -hmm. easier as well. Um, and it's good to know that you do something on your free time as well, that it's not. And speaking of lists, because yeah. we see this a lot on CVs and usually it's like, oh, reading, comma, traveling, comma, history. Um, I have so that. <laughs> <laughs> Nadine. <laughs> so what's better, and especially if you are um, kind of new to the job market, um, this is a great place to show your personality and dedication outside of your work experience. So for example, you can use your, your hobbies very strategically uh, in the sense that you can say, um, if for example, your hobby is reading you could say that you know you started a blog with book summaries uh and that you get this many readers on that and being specific about it this will really show that you actually really do like to read and you're committed and you're making something of it you have initiative um so there is it can be a very interesting section to have if you do that yeah, exactly okay so the last question and i'm sorry if uh if we're gonna miss more questions but unfortunately we only have uh, 40 minutes and we already been over it and um, so 
uh, we'll try to, if you want to send an email or anything like that, uh, we can try to answer more. And also, uh, Mom, one thing that I would like to say is that the next session will be next Thursday, uh, we believe, I'll confirm that later, uh, and it will be about the cover letter. And uh, that's also a very good one. And Mirana will be with us again. I'll be here again. <laughs> giving us a few tips uh, on how to get the uh, perfect cover letter. So yeah, I'll, we'll see you next time as well. So the last question I have here, let me just check. Are there any free online websites where we can check if the CV is APF compliant or what would your would our CV output be APS? Not sure, do you know any website that can do yes. that? Yes, so there is a service called Resume Awarded um, where you can actually put in a job description and the CV and it will kind of compare it with the keywords from the job description and CV and give you a score. I mean, it's not exact science obviously, but it can give you an idea of how well you've done and things that you might want to change. So resume worded. Okay, perfect. Do you want to write that on the chat? Can you, can you write? Uh, I think I can, I just have to find the chat. <laughs> yeah, because uh, literally someone just said, can you repeat the website? <laughs> Yeah, right. you can write it there, just so people can understand. Uh, panelists, there we go. There you go, guys. So you have it there uh, on the chat where you can check things. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to leave you. Uh, it has been very nice. Thank you so much, Mirona. Um, oh, thanks for having me. And thanks everyone for your questions. And if you do have more, um, you have my email, so you can also contact me. Yeah, and LinkedIn as well. So you guys can have the LinkedIn, send a message. And we hope to see you on our next one about cover letters. And I really hope that I wasn't too nervous. This was the first time, so please give me a break. Uh, <laughs> you did well, Nadine. What are you talking about? You're a natural. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, <laughs> we did it. It's done. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. And the best take out on this is don't go out, spray and pray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>